get my six. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the most awesomest homesteading channel on the entire planet that has absolutely nothing to do with homesteading. So once again, we're transferring Eastern Red Cedars. We've got our first row that we wanted to put in, one of three. I'm gonna put in the second one hopefully today third one tomorrow it takes about two hours per row and I don't I don't push it I don't ever do it because I want to be able to do other things throughout the day and then again work more tomorrow but basically just like last time just a few days ago from this particular spot we captured potentially a Bigfoot Sasquatch as he she it or they crept down out of the woods where they where they usually are to watch what we were doing down here. So uh, I think 16,000 of you as of this recording has seen that video, you've seen it, you've time stamped it. That's what you gotta do folks to help each other out. If you see it, put down the, you know, say like 16 minutes and 24 seconds or whatever. Say what you see, that helps others see it. So it's gonna be warmer today than usual. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and get to it. Minimal talking, which as you know, is difficult for me. I've already got my first cedar tree dug up from the meadow, so I'm gonna go get it, I'm gonna plant it, I'm gonna do my best to not block your view while you watch for him, her, it, or they in the background. You know, there's some little seedlings exactly where I wanted the big one. I hate to even move them. While I was over there, my spidey senses were telling me somewhere right around that skinny poplar tree. So you keep watching. This is a diversion. I'm trying to make him, her, it, or they think I'm talking about trees, but I'm actually talking about them, or they, or it, or he or she, okay? You know what I'm getting at, folks. Keep getting my six. You know what, I'm gonna do it anyway, because one of these seedlings is an invasive Bradford pear. I need to get rid of them anyway, so it's going here.
So in last week's tutorials, I told you about how to dig them up. Now you actually get to see how to plant them. You want to make your hole about the exact same size as the root ball. Yeah, they say waste not what not. I will plant this little one somewhere. It's off to a good start. It's off to a good start and there's no need to waste that. I'll put that somewhere. There's always a gap to fill in somewhere. Yeah, you want the whole same width, same depth. Have it the same width, same depth. And don't plant it any deeper. The tree will experience zero shock. Especially if you get it from the same soil soil location, the pH, everything's pretty much the same. Now let's see if that's a fit. Oh, this is a beauty. This one's six feet tall. Maybe six six. It's about as big as I'll transfer them. Again, I've said before, we've had the most success with the smaller trees. <laughs> oh yeah, this is good. Now make sure it's straight. Not straighter than a politician, isn't it? All right, that'll work. Now any soil that's going to be particularly close to the roots, you want to make sure to crumble up as much as you can. Make it loamy uh, so as the roots do grow, they don't have to push through hardened soil. Of course, again, remember that three-year rule with trees. Sleep, creep, leap. That first year, they're not going to grow much at all, if any, as the roots are getting reacclimated to their new environment. Second year, they'll start to creep out. And then that third year, they're like, yeah, this is home. This is where I'm supposed to be. And a tree will just explode and grow. So first couple years, you'll be like, man, when's that tree gonna grow? When's that tree gonna grow? And then the third year, you just come out one day and the, the differences can be seen almost daily. You're like, wow, look at that. That tree found it some, found it some roids somewhere.
All right, well, I got that one. Okay, so, let's see, the camera's now blocking your view, though, of where I wanted you to watch. Well, let's just move the camera, huh? Just a little bit, doesn't have to be much. Make sure the camera doesn't fall. Yeah, you should be able to see from there, I think. So, I'm actually going to secure the tripod with my little tree I'm going to plant elsewhere. I'll plant this, I'll get this in the ground today, and then this way I won't forget about it because I'll have to move that to get my tripod. So, I'm going to go get another cedar. I might be gone for a few minutes, but that's okay because you're not here to watch me, right? Hope you're learning something if you're paying attention, but you're looking for him, her, it, or they. So keep watching and keep squatching. Oh, the bumblebee. Yay. Oh, that's perfect. That's a beautiful tree. Look at that. I'm like 5'10". It's like 6'2". Yeah, that's great. This one's going to get my branch, yeah.
Got us another beauty. This one's about seven feet tall. Being a little aggressive here with the size thing, but it's still cool, the cool time of year. And I do water these trees. I literally stretch a water hose out. I got like three of them put together for 300 feet. Bring them over here, the water hose to this side of the pond and water these trees. Uh, I'll do that. If it's not raining and if it's hot, I'll do it twice a week. Um, and I'll do that for the first three years of their life. That's how we've successfully grown trees from this size and smaller to 20 to 25 feet high all the way around the property, except for just this little spot right here. It's maybe 40 yards, not even that. 20 or It's just a 20 or 30 yard gap. And so we're filling it in now. And over the next three years, during hot, dry periods, I will bring that water hose over here and water these things twice a week. Um, and then I just sit back and watch them grow. So let me plant this one. You guys keep watching. Time stamp anything you're seeing. <clears throat> some more tree wisdom somebody said once in the comment section here on the channel it's a woman who said her daddy taught her when she was growing up planting trees that if you're going to plant a $20 tree make sure you dig a $40 hole there's a lot of wisdom in that you can have a perfectly healthy tree but if you don't do the hole properly that tree's not going to make it so you want to put as much care into the hole as you would the tree. It's where width and depth is important. Loamy soil surrounding the roots. Don't pack the soil down anywhere. And of course watering. But don't overwater. A lot of people get too aggressive and water them too much. Then the roots will rot. If it's raining regularly, you don't even need to worry about watering. When we get periods of rain, I don't come out and water. Get my eye pro on. I don't want to throw dirt in my eyeballs. This hole needs to be a little deeper than the last one because the tree I dug up was rooted deeper. Yeah, and you want the hole you're transferring it into to be pretty much as similar to the hole you took it from to avoid shock. This is a cedar root from that big 
giant cedar tree you see there. It's come out 30 foot from the tree. That thing's very well rooted. And that, that won't hurt that tree. All right, a few years back, I was planting some fruit trees down on the other side of the pond, actually on top of the dam. It's an earthen dam built in 1955. I found some Civil War grape shot. It's like scatter shot. They shot out of the cannons back then. Now we know that there were no battles here in this part of Virginia. We're about 30 miles outside of Charlottesville. Maybe not even that far, but, um, the closest battle was the Battle of Rio Hill. Um, what's his name? Guy got got killed at uh, Little Bighorn. Um, Custard, General Custard, actually led the Union troops in that battle. Um, so my assumption is, when they were building that dam, they brought fill dirt in from somewhere else where there had been a battle, or target practice at least, <clears throat> and that's how that got there. But it's interesting. You never know what you might find. Uh, so I've got the hole deep enough. I'm gonna fill in the bottom with some loamy soil at first so the roots can get through it easier. Then I'll put the tree in. It's always a good idea to wear your eye pro when you're moving these cedars too. They'll poke you in the eyeballs. Wear long sleeves too so they don't agitate your skin. <gasps> oh, perfect. Perfect. <sighs> Straight. All right, so it looks like yet again, I blocked your view of him, her, it, or they. And we've been going on close to 25 minutes here. And I found that to pretty much be the maximum effective attention span of my YouTube viewers. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off. But throughout this process, and I still haven't even eaten any breakfast. I need to, I'm gonna bury this one, get some food, come back later. But as I'm going throughout this process, I will continue to record. And hopefully we will continue to potentially capture the potential Bigfoot Sasquatch that may or may not live in the woods behind my house, just like last Friday. Could be catching them every Friday, it's great. It's like furry Fridays, somebody said in the comments. Um, so thanks for being here, thanks for watching. If you saw him, hurry it or they, time stamp it so the others can see it. I hope you learned something about trees. Hope you get inspired to go out there and plant a tree. Just go go, go to the Lowe's or whatever stores, uh, seed stores, farm grain stores this spring and just get a tree and just put it out in your yard. Plant just one you'll make a difference. Remember, what makes society, society great is that when men plant trees whose shade they won't live long enough to enjoy. But you know what? Our children will enjoy that shade. Our grandchildren will enjoy that shade. All the fruit trees we planted, hey, I'm already eating that fruit, and so will my kids and grandkids in the future. All right, thanks for being here. See you for more next time.